Daniel Margala, and I'm here today. today. Uh, I'm here um, to uh, introduce uh, Python to to you here uh, at um, give you some tips on how we use Python at, at NERSC. Okay, so today I'll go over kind of the basics of using Python with the Python and Conda modules that we provide. Um, also um, talk a little bit about creating uh, Conda environments, um, which are helpful when you're using Python here at NERSC and also give you some tips for installing packages. Um, there's also a few gotchas when running at scale or doing parallel Python. Um, so I'll, I'll mention those as well and point to more information in our documentation where you could follow up on some of those topics. Um, and also give a very, very brief high level introduction. If you've never used um, a GPU from Python before, I'll, I'll give you a few pointers for getting started there as well. So feel free to ask questions. I guess there's the, the Google Doc. Um, and yeah, if there's anything that doesn't make sense or is not clear, if you'd like more information, just feel free to reach out, ask a question, and we can try to help out with that. So to get started, um, the to use Python, it, we have we provide a Python module. So when you're when you log into to NERSC, you can just type in module load Python, um, and you'll get a uh, a Python in your environment that's that's provided by, by NERSC. And so this Python that we provide is a is actually a, it's a conda environment and it includes a lot of package commonly used scientific packages. So you can use it to get started um, for for simple sort of Python scripts that do some sort of data analysis or maybe make a few plots. It's a it's a great, it's easy way to kind of just get a Python that has a lot of common packages that you'll need. Um, to do a lot of basic tasks. Um, yeah, so like I mentioned, it's a, it's a Conda environment, uh, has a lot of common packages um, there. And so there are some other options for using Python at NERSC. So if there's something in the, the, the default Python module uh, environment, if there's some Python package that's not there, you can create your own um, Conda invite, you can use the Conda tool to create your own uh, environment. And so there's a, another module called Conda, you can module load Conda and then use Conda to create an environment with whatever packages that you need. And so that's great for um, when you when you need something specific for your specific data analysis, um, that's a great way to, to use that. We also recommend um, using containers to, to use Python. Um, so that's another way where you can kind of package your environment up into a, a reusable container and, and use Shifter to run that at, at NERSC. Um, and I'll note here over on the side, um, there, there is a, a system Python. So if you log into Perlmutter and you don't load Conda or you don't load the Python module, if you just um, look, look for Python, there'll be a Python command available to you, but that will be the, the system Python. And that's often not the Python you're looking for. There's there are not many packages in there and it could be a, a much older version of Python. So we recommend um, if you want to use kind of more the, the latest versions of Python and, and create your own environments, we recommend using either the, the Conda module or the, the Python module to get started, or as I mentioned, a, a container. Um, so just very briefly about the, the Conda module. Um, so Conda is a environment and package management tool. It's very popular in the scientific Python community. It's been around for, for many years now. And so a lot of Python packages, if you go to their documentation, they'll have instructions for how to install the package using Conda. Um, and we strongly recommend using Conda environments because they're, they're great for kind of encapsulating all of the the package dependencies you need for a particular project into a, an environment. Um, so it's very helpful if you need to work on two different projects that might have conflicting dependencies, if you can kind of just keep those dependencies separate in separate environments, it's, it's very, very powerful and, and useful for doing that. Conda also has a um, package dependency solver, which helps sort out issues when you have 
many packages and they might have different, uh, they might have depend on different versions of common uh, dependencies. So it's great for, for figuring that sort of stuff out. The Conda module at NERSC also does a little extra. If you use Conda on your laptop or workstation, you often have to do this Conda init step, which kind of adds some Conda initialization, initialization um, commands to your kind of shell login setup. And so the, at, at NERSC, you do not need to do that. And we recommend avoiding doing that. When you load the Conda module, it does all the initialization that, that needs to happen for you to use the Conda tool. And some other um, package installation tips, There's, all of these are in the, the nurse documentation, um, but at a very high level, the Conda tool um, kind of has packages in different channels. And the most popular ones are the, the default channels or the, and the Conda Forge channel. And in a lot of cases, you can find almost whatever Python package you need there. Some packages are not in Conda, um, so you might use something like pip to install them. And for the most part, it's fine to pip install packages into Conda environments. Um, so yeah, I think um, Conda has some specific recommendations for um, you know what to worry about when you're mixing those things. And we have links to that in our the uh, Python documentation in the in the nurse in the nurse docs. There are some packages that should be compiled with the compiler wrappers that are available on the system. Um, those are, I mean, the most common one is MPI for Pi. So in order to use the Cray optimized um, MPI library that's available at NERSC, that needs to be built uh, locally at, at NERSC using the compiler wrapper. So we have some tips for, I'll show you in the next slide how to do that. And again, that, that information is also in the the Python documentation and the nurse docs. And then an another common um, issue is uh, with the, the CUDA toolkit. And so at NERSC, there's a CUDA toolkit module that's loaded by default in your default environment. Um, and then another, an issue that comes up with, with Python and Conda users is that um, a lot of Conda packages that do GPU stuff um, have a dependency on CUDA toolkit and there's a CUDA toolkit package in, in Conda as well. So it could be tricky sometimes making sure that if you're installing a, a Conda package that depends on CUDA toolkit, you might bring in a CUDA toolkit in your Conda environment. And if you have the CUDA toolkit module loaded, it, it could create some, some issues sometimes. So I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that later um, to give some tips for you know using one or the other. So as I mentioned, uh, MPI for Pi is a, is a common package that you want to use at NERSC to run your Python code in parallel. Um, and you want to use the Cray and Pitch module to, um, to take advantage of that, that optimized MPI library on, that's available on the system. Um, so in the, the Python module that we provide, we've, we've included an MPI for Pi that is already built and linked with the uh, the optimized um, Cray and Pitch with CUDA support. And if you wanted to do that yourself, um, this is a, a little recipe that you'd use to do that. So you, you'd have to load the, the modules that you need. So you, this assumes that you're using the GNU programming environment and you want to use the CUDA toolkit module. Um, uh, you also need to load this. These are actually the CUDA toolkit and this Cray PE, Excel, and NVIDIA are, are loaded by default, but I was just showing them from here because they, they are needed. Um, and so when you create a Conda environment, you do Conda create and you give it some name and we want to install Python. Um, and then when you, you activate the Conda environment and then the special instructions for installing MPI for Pi are on this fourth line here where you have to um, specify that you want to use this the CC um, compiler wrapper. Um, so again, this recipe is in our documentation, but just to give you a heads up, if you want to use MPI for Pi, um, you do need to do something um, special to have it built locally and, and link with the Cray and Pitch with CUDA support. Another warning about um, installing packages. Sometimes PIP will you know, just do, do what you ask, but you may, you may have made some assumptions about 
what you're what you're doing. So one one thing that we see a lot is that um, you know if you're trying to install something and you want to install a newer version, if you've already pip installed that package, you might be installing a, the, an older version from like a local package cache that that pip keeps. Uh, another issue could be when you're installing packages uh, with the dash dash user, or sometimes even just if you have the the default. Uh, the Python module loaded and you try to pip install something, because you can't install into the system uh, Python environment, it'll try to just install it somewhere locally in your home directory. Um, but that can cause um, surprises when you're you know, activating a different environment and you still see that same package there. So we recommend trying to avoid using this dash dash user um, flag when you pip install things and try to just pip install things into your conda environment, not, not outside of them. Again, the idea is there is that if you keep everything in a kind of encapsulated environment, then there'll be fewer conflicts when you're switching between projects. Okay, so Kind of switching gears a little bit um, from installing packages. Um, now, when you're when you're running uh, Python at NERSC, um, one thing to be aware of is that Python um, is very it can put a significant load on the uh, file systems, um, and that problem is compounded when you're running in parallel. Um, just kind of due to the nature of Python and how it pulls in. How everything is, you know, kept in file. A lot of lots of different files, and um, it just has to read many files in the file system in order to import even just a single uh, uh, module or or package or something that could could involve thousands of lines reading thousands of files from the file system. Um, and so on 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 Perlmutter, if you're on a CPU node and trying to run, you know, 128 processes in in parallel. Um, it's just it's compounded by uh, that that factor. Um, so we we noticed this can significantly affect performance, and to to avoid this, we recommend uh, um, using a container. When you run out of a container, it doesn't it avoids having to to read all these files from the file system. Um, another option after using a container um, is to install your environment on onto the global global common software um, file system um, and so there there should be a, a a directory for each project um, and so you can use conda and instead of just using the name um, argument which will create the conda environment in your home directory you can use this dash p or dash dash prefix um, option to specify a full path where it can install the uh, conda environment. Um, yeah, there's an example of that here. We kind of create dash p and then give it a full path and then say what you want. And then when you activate that environment, again, you have to provide the full path. Um, and so those are the two things we recommend. And then just to reiterate, we recommend avoiding home and installing your conda environment or Python environments on the home or CFS file systems. Um, because if you run in parallel out of out of those dire its directories, it could put a significant load on the system and actually affect performance of the file system for for other users as well. A few other uh, kind of common I call them pitfalls here because a lot of times they happen quite unexpectedly um, when you're using Python in parallel. Um, is kind of this a lot of it is, is really due to kind of this indirect parallelism that is really nice in python you can use numpy and it's uh, an optimized array library and it calls all these optimized blasts and the pack functions for you um, but it's it's parallel under the hood um, so if you start using numpy with uh, multi-processing or, or mpi you have to be careful that you're not doing too much parallel like all those processes are all trying to use lots of parallelism under the hood. Um, so the parallelism in, in NumPy can be controlled with this OMP num threads environment variable. So often when you're 
if you're going to be using Python and NumPy uh, for multiple processes, we recommend um, changing this OMP num threads so that you're not exceeding the number of physical CPU cores on each on each node. Another thing to watch out for is the multiprocessing, which is a, a common uh, parallel library that people use in, in Python. Um, a default value for for choosing how many multiprocessing workers to use is often, um, you know, I see a lot of this in examples or, or libraries might use OS um, CPU count to figure out how many uh, workers that multiprocessing should use. This is often going to default to the number of um, logical cores on the node. Um, and it also doesn't account for if you're running like MPI and using Slurm to do CPU binding, it does not account for that CPU binding as well. So it's it's uh, you could trip yourself up and, and try to spin up way too many workers. Um, so again, when you're when you're running in, in parallel, um, you should watch out for these are the two biggest kind of gotchas. So just to, to summarize all of those kind of tips for if you're just getting started using Python at NERSC, we'd strongly recommend using conda environments or containers to kind of keep your Python environments in, in separate um, sandboxes. Um, if you're not using containers, then um, make sure to install your, your conda environment to the global common software file system uh, when running in parallel. Um, if you're using MPI for Pi, you should use the compiler wrappers to build it locally and link with the optimized Cray and Pitch library. You do not need to run Conda and NIT. Um, and yeah, watch out using pip. Sometimes there could be some uh, issues if you're install trying to install packages. So um, also want to make sure you're avoiding using the system Python. And yeah, those those last tips about oversubscription are important to keep in mind when you're when you're scaling up, trying to use all the resources available on a compute or GPU node. Keep checking time. I think I'm okay. Okay. Um, to switch gears a little bit here, um, so Perlmutter has a GPU partition um, and. If you're using Python, uh, you might want to be able to take advantage of those GPUs as well. Um, so the most common kind of scientific Python libraries, NumPy and SciPy, they don't util utilize GPUs out of the box. Um, but there are a lot of GPU libraries um, in Python that, that can help you take advantage of those GPUs. So two very popular ones that are um, we can describe as drop-in replacements for NumPy, SciPy, Pandas, or Scikit-Learn. So that means they kind of provide the same API as NumPy. So if you're used to creating like a, a NumPy array or doing NumPy Linalge operations, the CuPy library is essentially provides all of the a good portion of the the functionality that NumPy does through this uh, the same interface, um, but it, it creates um, it operates on, on data that, that's on the GPU. Um, so CuPy is a great way to get started. And, and similarly, the, the Rapids uh, ecosystem provides a lot of functionality that's in, in SciPy or Pandas or, or Scikit-Learn. There's also the very, very popular uh, machine learning libraries like PyTorch and TensorFlow and JAX. And so you might first think that those are just for machine learning, but they're actually, um, they also support just general GPU computing as well. So they provide a lot of that similar functionality that, that maybe CuPy or Rapids are using. So if you're, so those are also um, good to consider. Um, and then if you do wanna kind of go a little bit lower level, and write your own GPU kernels, but still keep your, your code in, in Python. Um, the Numba, Numba has a CUDA JIT compiler option. So Numba has been around for a while and lets you write kind of Python-like um, code that gets compiled into lower le level language code. Um, uh, it also have a, has a, a CUDA JIT interface that you could use. There's also CUDA Python from NVIDIA that you could use and that it's almost like just writing the lower level CUDA stuff, but but from Python. Um, and then beyond 
that kind of just getting started on on GPUs when you want to start scaling out to maybe multiple GPUs or multi nodes or to it's called like distributed memory uh, GPU programming. Um, uh, recommend that one of the common things is just using like MPI for Pi to to run multiple processes in parallel with with, a, with the whatever other GPU um, library or framework you're using. There's also Dask for um, Dask is an option for doing distributed uh, Python programming. It can scale out to multiple nodes. Um, and then something a little newer um, is called Kunumeric, um, which it could be an interested, interesting um, library to try out as well. That one is a little bit more still kind of uh, in, in beta a bit. Um, and so a lot of these GPU libraries um, have a, a common interface so you can use you can use multiple in the same program, and you can kind of move data between the different frameworks, and the data doesn't <clears throat> the data stays on the GPU, and so that's kind of helpful sometimes if you're just trying things out or want to try to write um, code that could be used with multiple different frameworks. Um, there's also been some effort in the community to kind of try to standardize some of the. Uh, array API that they use. So on the right here is a kind of an example from was probably from a few years ago now where someone kind of looked at many of these different GPU frameworks for this common function just as taking the mean of a, an array. And they all had very similar uh, arguments that they accepted, but slightly different in some cases. And, and in some cases, the defaults were different as well. So this was kind of a barrier for a little bit. But I think the, the community um, it's kind of recognize this and is, is trying to uh, rectify this by kind of agreeing on a common interface to a lot of these um, standard functions. Um, and so here's just an example of how you might create um, a conda environment that uses one of these packages. So here this uses kupai and then this, this slide and the next one, I'll just illustrate something I alluded to earlier, this CUDA, CUDA toolkit dependency. It's going to be a, a, an important one for your GPU conda environment. So this example assumes that you're getting CUDA toolkit from the, the module system, the nurse provided module. So when you're using this, you just have to module load conda, you create your environment. And then because we want to use the system, the, the, the CUDA toolkit module, we, we use pip to install kupai. Um, and in this case, we need to make sure that it's compatible with whatever the, the default CUDA toolkit is on our system. And so you might use this because if, if you specify kupai in the conda package, it would pull in the CUDA toolkit into your conda environment. Um, and this way, this keeps your conda environment smaller. The CUDA toolkit is just the, uh, it's, it can inflate the size of your conda environment by, by a few gigabytes. Um, so. This is one way to avoid having to do that. And just to compare that, if you if you do want to use the CUDA toolkit um, from Conda, and you might want to do this so that your environment um, still works if, for example, the CUDA toolkit default on the system changes, um, then if, if you're not using that CUDA toolkit and you have CUDA toolkit in your, your Conda environment, this would, you know, not, this would keep your environment working even when the module CUDA toolkit default changes. Um, so here we unload the CUDA toolkit so there's not any conflicts. And then when you install uh, Kupai, you can install using uh, Conda install. And that pulls a CUDA toolkit into your environment. And again, there's, there's these recipes in this discussion is all in the, the nurse documentation under the Python pages. Um, and lastly, the so the question we get is, um, you know, when should I use a GPU? And so, this is this is kind of just the general advice of when to use GPUs, and just specific for Python. On the right here is an example of just it really depends on how what sort of um, things that your your code is doing. So if you're doing computation on large arrays or matrices or or images. And it's often good to move over to the GPU. So on the right here, there's um, two curves here, one for doing matrix multiplication using NumPy on the CPU, and one the orange curve is for doing it using uh, QPy on the GPU. 
And so the thing that's changing on the x-axis is the size of the matrix and the y-axis is plotting the, um, the processing time. So for small matrix sizes, you see the blue line is lower than the orange line. So doing that operation on the CPU is actually um, faster. And then, but at, at larger matrix sizes at about N20 uh, or so, um, it becomes more if it uh, becomes faster to, to do that operation on, on the GPU. So there's not always a, a one size fits all operation. So it'll often depend on, on what you're what you're doing. Um, and there's some tips in our documentation as well for for choosing a GPU accelerated Python uh, framework. Yeah, so I think I mentioned this a lot. There's there's a lot of information in our documentation. So hopefully you can come back to these slides later or just go to the documentation and find the information that's there if, if you um, want more information about using Python at NERSC or want to revisit any of these topics. Um, and if you have a question that's not in the documentation or you can't find it, maybe you can always feel free to submit a ticket um, to NERSC and we'll try to help you help you out. So I think that's it. I think I'm okay on time. Okay, awesome. Did anyone have any uh, questions for Daniel?